Hi, this is Brad Peel on Beat. Today I want to talk to you about diet research. Specifically, I want to talk to you about the idea of measuring how many calories people eat. Now, you often see things like the subjects in study ate 2,000 calories plus or minus 100. Now, in this situation, most people read the 2,000 and they ignore what this plus or minus 100 means. Typically, in, in weight loss and diet research, this is a called a standard deviation, which really doesn't mean much to anybody. What it really means is you take this number, you times it by 2. And what I'm telling you is, the people in my trial ate 2,000 calories, plus or minus 200 calories. So, it's, this is just an average, and this is to give you an idea of kind of whereabouts they were. So, if this was a graph of how much people ate in my trial, and that's 2,000, if I tell you it's plus or minus 100, what I'm telling you is that, by and large, most of the people in my trial, you know, ate numbers somewhere around 2,000. This would actually be a fairly well-controlled trial. The problem is most diet and weight loss research doesn't look like this. It's most people in my trial ate 2,000 calories plus or minus 1,000. And as, as crazy as that sounds, it's because it's very hard to record what people eat. Typically you ask them to give you a, a recorded history or just tell you what they remember eating in the last three days. What this tells you is that you know in your weight loss trial, that people ate all over the place. I mean, literally, you're looking at people who ate 4,000 calories or supposedly zero. You can see that all, a lot of this has to do with errors in recording. It's really important when you're reading weight loss research to look at that number, because that number will tell you how accurate the range was. So if it's 2,000 plus or minus 100, it's probably a well-controlled study. If it's 2,000 plus or minus 1,000, you can be really careful when reviewing the results and take everything to say with a grain of salt. So I'm Brad Peel on FreedSlapBeat.com, and that's how to read a diet trial with standard deviation.